Hello, I'm Eric Grello, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's a free website for everything Photoshop, Lightroom, and anything else we find interesting. In this video, I'm going to take a stock image, and I'm going to use some colors and some textures to make it a little bit more dynamic. Now, there are no complicated masks in this, just a couple of masks that I like to refer to as blob masks. But through some simple techniques, using opacity and blending modes, we can make something quite different. So let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. So here I am in Photoshop and I'm going to go ahead and get my base image. Now I've put everything I'm going to use for this into one library. So here's my base image. I'm going to double click that. So up comes my first image. Now the white background isn't something that I'm particularly keen on, so I'm going to change the background straight off the bat. And to do that, I'm going to get hold of this grunge blue black and just drag it in and drop it. Now, of course, you don't have to use libraries to do this. I'm just using libraries to make it a bit easier for myself. Okay, I'm going to position this. Now, I don't need to keep it all in proportion because obviously it's a random thing, so it doesn't matter. There we go. And I'm going to click the tick. Okay, let's blend that down and we're going to use the blend mode of darken. There we go. And straight away, we've got this nice background going on. There's a little bit of overlay with uh, the lady here, so let's get rid of that. I'm going to create a mask and then get a brush. And with black on a white mask, I can then just bring down the opacity. You can see I've got it set to 10% at the moment. I can then do what's called, a, what I call, a blob mask. And that is, I just go around and just blob bits down just until I get what I'm looking for. There we go. Now these bits are going to take a little more because I want them to be almost completely gone. So I'm just going to blob that down there. There we go. And then come onto her face there and just get rid of a bit more there. There we go. Okay, there we go. All done there. Okay, next what I'm going to do is go back over to my libraries and I'm going to choose something else. I'm actually going to choose this red smoke. So let's pop that there. Let's position that. I want it sort of down the bottom, really. Something like that. Maybe a little bit bigger. There's no right or wrong to this, of course. Do whatever you like. There we go. I'm going to go there. Click the tick. And to blend this in, I'm going to use the blending mode of screen. And that's going to drop out all the blacks and leave just the lighter colors, which in this case is the reds. Okay, that's looking nice. Let's put that on again so I can repurpose that. Just drag that on. And this time I'm going to twist it around, maybe bring it up here a little bit. And again, I can resize this, no big deal. There we go. Just add a little bit more movement into here. There we go. Okay, cool. I'm going to click the tick. And once again, I'm going to change it to screen. This time I don't want to see it quite so much. So I'm going to drop this down to 50%. So if I'm on the move tool, I can actually change the opacity of this layer just by pressing five on my keyboard. There we go. Now, I don't want this to be red either. It's causing a bit too much red up here. So I'm going to change that now. And to do that, I'm going to add a hue saturation layer. So there we go, hue saturation. And I'm going to take this down maybe to 57-ish. There we go. I know that 57 will work well for this. That'll do. And I'm going to bring this down by about the same. There we go. And the lightness, I'm going to keep at zero. At the moment, it's affecting the whole image. So what I need to do is clip that just the layer below. That's what this icon here is for. So if I click on that, now it's just affecting that smoke or that powder that's behind her there. Okay, there we go. Let's go get another one. This time I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to pop that one down and then just bring it right up. There we go, let's really make that quite a lot longer. So it looks like it's exploding from the floor. There we go, that's cool. And again, we're gonna use screen here because it's got a black background. There we go, we've got this nice puff of smoke coming up from the bottom, good. Okay, let's go for it. one more. This one here, there are all these sparkles here. And let's resize that. Again, I'm not worried about proportions. And again, I'm gonna drop this one into screen. There we go, and click the tick. Now it's all getting a bit messy now and we're starting to lose the character. So what we'd like to do is do another blob mask, but on everything. So to do that, the easiest way here is to put this into a group and then add a mask to the group. So I've got my sparkle already 
my sparkle layer already selected, if I come down and shift and click on this layer here, I can then press shift and alt and then click on the new group layer here and then it's going to group them all together and I'm going to call this one texture. There we go and hit enter. Now they're all in a group, I can add a layer mask to that group and once again get the brush and I can start blobbing that. I'm going to go up to 30% here just to make it a little bit quicker. All right, there we go. We can start getting rid of this now along her front there. I want it to be sort of bursting out of this. There we go. I'm just dabbing down where I want it to be a little less and then sort of colouring in where I want it to be a lot less. There we go. Let's go back to 10% now just to refine that a little bit, a few more dabs. And I'm actually going to flip flop the colours over now. So I'm painting in black. I'm going to paint in white just to bring back some of the details now. There we go. Just bring back some of that there and here and then flip flop again just to dab on there to get rid of those bits. Okay, looking good. Okay, let's uh, lighten this up and give it a bit more of a, a grungy texture. Again, I'm going to back to my libraries. This time I'm going to go for grunge concrete, one of my favorite textures. Drop that on, resize it. There we go. And once we're done, we can click the tick. There we go. And I'm going to change the blend mode. This time I'm going to come all the way down. Let's go to divide. There we go. And we're going to reduce the opacity of this to 40%. So let's go on the move tool, press four. Now we're on 40%. So we've added this texture and we've lightened it all up a little bit, maybe a little bit too much, but we'll deal with that in just a little while. Okay, let's go for one more. Let's add a bit more, put in the smoke and we'll Bring that right up as well, just to give a little bit more texture down at the bottom. And as you might expect, we're going to use screen again, just to drop out all the blacks. Now this smoke is good, but I could give it a little bit more uh, contrast here. I'm going to do that with levels. So there we go, down to levels. And then I'm going to bring this one up to around about 135-ish. There we go. And I'm going to bring this slider up just a little bit, it's around about there, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and then let's move this middle slider and we're gonna move that one just a little bit over here just to give it a bit more. Now, once again, it's affecting the whole layout. We don't want to do that. Let's clip it down. Now it's only affecting the smoke. So now we've done that. Okay, cool. So where we've made it a bit darker, of course, we can see through it as well. So there's not so much smoke there now. Let's give it a little bit of a color. To do that, let's use hue saturation again. Hue saturation. And we'll click on colorize. And I think we want to be around about the 125-ish. There we go, nice green color. Let's clip this already. So it's just affecting the smoke. And then this one maybe up in the 50s. There we go. And then we'll bring this up as well. And maybe down a little bit, there we go. Okay, good. All right, looking good. We're starting to make some real changes to this. Now what I want to do is just make it uh, have a little bit of a vignette in there. And I'm gonna go old school for this. So I'm gonna create a new layer, but I'm gonna press Alt when I create the new layer. And that's gonna bring up the new layer dialog box. I can then put Vin for vignette. And if I change the mode to overlay, I then get the option to fill with overlay neutral color of 50% gray. That's exactly what I want. There we go and click OK. This has no effect at all um, until we start putting lights and darks on it. I'm going to go and get the gradient tool and I really want it nothing to black, which I've already got here, but you notice I've got black to white there. So if I click OK and then click on the reverse, I've got nothing to black, which means now I can come in here. Let's bring the opacity up, yep, and then click and drag it out and we end up with a really nice kind of darker edge to it. Now I can go back and I can refine that a little bit, maybe do a bit more blob masking just to get it exactly as I want. But you can see we've come quite a long way. If I go back down and press the Alt key and click on the eyeball for our original layer, that's where we started and that's where we finished. A lot more dramatic. 
I'm going to do a little bit more blob masking on this, I think, just to refine a little bit. But there we go. That's using textures and blend modes to give a little bit of dynamics to an image. I'm Eric Reno. This has been a video for tipsgrill.com. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.